that surely is game over. And unless we get the mother, father, auntie and uncle of second leg comeback, surely Posh are as good as confirmed to be at Wembley for the League One final. It was one for the ages at Hillsborough last night as Sheffield Wednesday make arguably the greatest ever playoff semi-final comeback to reach Wembley and the League One final. Wednesday were 4-0 down after a disastrous collapse in the first leg and history kept telling us that the biggest deficit ever overturned in the playoffs between two legs was two goals. A win from four behind would be unprecedented, but that is exactly what happened. The deficit was cut in half by half-time. Michael Smith fired home a ninth-minute penalty following a body check on Marvin Johnson. Lee Gregory prodded home a second on 25 minutes. Rhys James put Wednesday within a goal of their unlikely target with 20 left of normal time. And in the eighth minute of stoppage time. Liam Palmer forced home the equaliser 4-4 on aggregate to take it to extra time. Peterborough then put the cat amongst the pigeons by going back in front via a Lee Gregory own goal in period one of extra time. But back came Wednesday. Callum Patterson powered into the box, poked home yet another equaliser to make it 5-5 on aggregate and take us to penalties. It was then a perfect five out of five pens for the Owls, Dan Butler hit the bar with his kick for Posh and Wednesday are off to Wembley. Just mind-blowing stuff. I'll try and explain how on earth I think it happened, but when we have a comeback of such proportions, we can almost put the technical, tactical stuff to one side and focus purely on the mentality, psychology, momentum, and the other intangibles that we all know are happening but we just have no way of measuring or indeed proving. The American writer James Baldwin said, the most dangerous creation of any society is the man with nothing to lose. And I think that is probably the starting point for all of this. The first leg scoreline and subsequent expectations completely simplified and crystallized the Sheffield Wednesday objective. It's almost an argument that Wednesday were actually more likely to come back from 4-0 down than say 2-0 on the basis that their only chance of doing it was an all-out attacking onslaught for the entire game. They had nothing to lose. Peterborough had everything to lose. If the nothing to lose philosophy was present on the pitch, then it was also very present in the stands too. Hillsborough was crammed full with just about 32,000 fans and that energy surely played into the outcome. Simultaneously lifting the Wednesday players, and probably making that Peterborough 11 feel like a very lonely underdog with the entire world against them. Which brings us to Peterborough, and look, without in any way diminishing Sheffield Wednesday's stunning comeback, there are certain characteristics of this posh team that will have played into what happened last night. Peterborough have been a bit erratic throughout the season, sometimes looking irresistible, sometimes looking pretty flaky, and for the most part, punished the lower rank League One sides and struggled, especially away, against the better ones. Of course, they were good value for their first leg league, but it did feel a large part of the big deficit going into leg two was down to Wednesday's psychological, emotional collapse, rather than Peterborough necessarily being four goals better than Sheffield Wednesday as a team. As if we need reminded, Sheffield Wednesday got 96 points in the regular season. Over the nine months, they were clearly a much better side and Posh just didn't have it in their makeup to do the organised containing job that needed doing. And finally, there's momentum. I mean, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I can't measure it. I can't prove its existence. But surely we can all feel it last night and see it compounded with every action from the pre-game noise, the fast start, the timing of pretty much all the goals, especially the third one, to set up for that last gasp equaliser. Even after that, Peterborough punched back in extra time. Once Wednesday got back into it again, and the captain Bannon won the right to take the first penalty and do the shoot out in front of the home end, you almost knew 
what the outcome of the penalties was going to be. What a narrative switch then. We've gone from at the weekend talking about the biggest collapse in playoff history to today talking about the most incredible comeback. The 96-point manager was a failure. He was headed for the job centre at the weekend. And I think all of those conversations about the playoff structure being unfair to the team that finishes third might have to just go on the back burner once again. Darren Moore, the Wednesday boss, has carried himself with great class and dignity all season, very calm in the face of what has been quite heavy criticism. It's a job with giant expectations, and he's had to do it during a freak season, given the crazy totals posted by Plymouth and Ipswich up ahead of Wednesday in the table. Sheffield Wednesday will now face either Bolton or Barnsley in the final at Wembley. We'll know the opponent at some point tonight. I think people do forget that famous Troy Deeney goal, for example, arguably the greatest moment in playoff history, was followed up by Watford defeat in the final. Wednesday have just recorded arguably the greatest second leg comeback in playoff history. They now need to go finish the job at Wembley. Let me know your take down there in the comments. How on earth did this all happen? What happens next in this bonkers League One season that now extends on towards that Wembley final at the end of May. Why not stick with us here for another video? The Championship final is already set. Luton versus Coventry. No crazy comebacks, but plenty of drama. Click up here to see my reaction to both of the second legs as Luton and Coventry set up the showpiece final.